Hello, this is Ron Mertens from OLED Info, a web publication and service provider to the OLED industry. This presentation will provide an introduction to the OLED display market. We will start with an introduction to OLED display technology. We'll learn why OLEDs are better than LCDs. We'll see the difference between active matrix OLEDs and passive matrix ones. We'll check out the OLED display market in 2015. We'll see some sample passive matrix and active matrix displays. And finally, give an introduction to flexible and transparent OLEDs. An OLED, or an organic light-emitting diode, is made from organic carbon-based materials that emit light when electricity is applied. OLEDs can be used to make both displays and white OLED lighting panels. In OLED displays, each pixel is made from small red, green, and blue OLED sub-pixels, although some OLEDs use a white OLED emitter with color filters. An OLED lighting panel is like a large, single OLED pixel. Unlike LCDs, OLEDs do not require a backlighting unit. In fact, OLEDs have a very simple design, which means the displays are extremely thin and can be made flexible. OLED displays offer excellent image quality. In fact, these displays are the best displays ever produced in almost all image properties. OLEDs offer great contrast, which means that blacks are truly blacks, a wide color gamut, and very fast refresh rate. The viewing angles of OLEDs are very wide. In an OLED display, only lit pixels consume energy. A black pixel will not draw any power, and the brighter the image, the more power is consumed. This means that in some applications, power consumption is extremely low. For example, showing a clock on a mobile phone with a black background. OLEDs are a relatively new display technology, but already it is leading in some categories, such as mobile phones and wearables. For the web wearable market, OLEDs are perfect. They offer a great viewing experience while being thinner and lighter than the competition. Flexible displays enable new form factors, and the power consumption can be good if the user interface is right. LCD is a display technology that shouldn't have made it. The basic technology behind LCD is the liquid crystal, a transparent material that can be turned into a polarized light filter when electricity is applied. Inside an LCD is a white light source, either a fluorescent lamp or an LED array in your LCDs. The light is then polarized using a polarizing film, and the liquid crystal module either lets the light through or blocks it, as the polarization of the crystal is different than the one on the film. So an LCD is based on a technology that blocks light, not emits light, like in an OLED or plasma panel. An LCD has many required parts, the backlighting unit, polarizers, light guide, the liquid crystal film itself, and color filters. This makes it quite a complicated display, and it also means that around 80% of the original light from the backlighting unit is lost. In terms of picture quality, LCDs suffer from poor contrast, as even on totally black pixels, there's light leakage from the backlighting unit, and very slow refresh rates. Viewing angles and color gamut have been historically poor, but has improved greatly in your LCDs. As you see, LCD shouldn't have been so successful, but the technology pretty much took over the entire display market, from mobile screens to huge TV panels. The main reason is that LCD makers managed to scale up production and lower prices to a point that it is very difficult to compete with LCDs. As opposed to LCDs, OLEDs are emissive by nature. They do not need a backlighting unit. As you can see on the left, an OLED structure is very simple. Each subpixel is simply made from organic materials that emit light in either red, green, or blue. There's no need for polarizers, light guides, or color filters. OLEDs have a very simple design, with very few components compared to an LCD screen. This means that theoretically, OLEDs should be cheaper to produce. It also means that OLEDs are very thin and light, and it is far easier to make a flexible OLED compared to a flexible LCD. In addition, OLEDs are much faster than LCDs, and offer better contrast, wider viewing angles, and a large color gamut. But of course there's a catch. Producing an OLED display has proven to be very difficult. OLEDs are very sensitive to oxygen and moisture, and they need to be protected and produced in a vacuum or in nitrogen environment. They also need to be sealed with a good barrier to protect organic materials. Depositing those tiny OLED subpixels is also quite difficult and has proven to be challenging to scale up. 
which means that producing an OLED is currently quite expensive, and the larger the OLED, the more expensive it is. Due to the patterning problems, one solution has been to deposit white OLED pixels and use color filters on top. This is how LG Display makes the OLED TV panels, and this is how all OLED micro displays on the market are, ma are made today. In this slide, we are going to discuss the difference between two types of OLED displays, passive matrix OLEDs and active matrix OLEDs. Passive matrix OLED, or PIMOLED, is a simple small display that is driven in a simple architecture. PIMOLEDs are limited in resolution and size, but are easy to fabricate, and they still offer all the advantages of OLED displays, such as high efficiency, color gamut, high contrast, thin profile, and more. The maximum number of lines in a PIMOLED display is usually 128. Some PIMOLED displays offer dot matrix displays, some are segmented, so they can only show predefined images, and some offer character displays only. PIMOLEDs are rather cost-effective and are mostly used in MP3 players, small fitness bands, car audio systems, and all sorts of applications that require small displays. In the past, PIMOLEDs were used extensively in MP3 players and secondary mobile phone displays for clamshell phones, but the market for both applications shrank dramatically in past years. Active Matrix OLEDs, or AMOLEDs, use an active driving architecture that enables unlimited resolution and size. AMOLEDs offer higher quality displays and are also more efficient than PIMOLED displays, but this comes at a price, mainly a complicated production process and a higher cost. AMOLEDs are currently mostly used in smartphones, tablets, smartwatches, and TVs. To sum it up, if you're looking for a high-end display for a mobile phone or tablet or a smartwatch, you'll probably want an AMOLED. For cheaper, smaller, and more simple applications, a PIMOLED may suffice. Let's take a look at the small and medium OLED display market in 2015. Currently, there are four major PIMOLED makers and a few smaller ones. The total market is estimated at about 500 million US dollars a year, and the market has stagnated for a few years, but it seems to be growing now, mainly from wearable applications. The AMOLED market is a lot larger. In 2015, about 250 million AMOLEDs will be produced, generating revenues of about 15 billion dollars. AMOLED displays on the market range from about 3 inch to 10 inch in size. Most of the AMOLEDs being produced are used in mobile phones and are about 5 inch in size. Popular OLED applications include smartphones, tablets, digital cameras, wearables, and display used in automobiles, which are currently mostly passive matrix ones, but AMOLEDs will enter this market soon. Popular OLED devices on the market include smartphones from Samsung and Motorola and smartwatches from Apple, Samsung, and LG. There are four AMOLED producers today. Samsung Display makes the vast majority of AMOLED panels, and more than 90% of all OLEDs are made by Samsung Display. LG Display produces flexible OLEDs, for example the one used in Apple's Watch, and also OLED TVs, while AU Optronics and Ever Display both produce AMOLED displays commercially, but in a limited capacity. Most of Samsung's AMOLEDs are sold under the Super AMOLED brand, which integrates a touch panel into the display. Flexible and transparent OLEDs are entering the market. Both Samsung and LG produce flexible plastic-based AMOLED panels, and these are adopted in smartphones, for example Samsung's Galaxy S6 Edge with its curved plastic screen, and also in Apple's watch. Small size flexible passive matrix OLEDs are also being introduced. Transparent OLEDs, while easier to fabricate than flexible ones, are only now entering the market. Currently, the largest transparent OLED available is about 2.4 inch in size, or up to 4, 4 inch for segmented displays. So let's take a look at some sample passive matrix OLED displays now on the market. Here's a small 1 inch display made by Visionox, which is 96 by 64 pixels. And this is a larger 2.7 inch display, but it's monochrome. This is made by Wisechip. And here's a long, almost 3 inch character display by Wisechip, which is also monochrome. Here you can see a curved, flexible passive matrix OLED. It's made by Neoview Cologne, and it's 1.66 inches in diameter. This is a small 1.3 inch transparent OLED. It's monochrome, made by Neoview Cologne. 
And finally, we have a flexible passive matrix OLED made by Futaba, which is used by several wearable fitness bands, and it's 1.4 inch in diameter. And now for some active matrix OLEDs. We'll start with the largest non-TV AMOLED, which is Samsung's 10.5 inch WQXGA tablet panel. Samsung Display also produces a smaller 8.4 inch tablet Super AMOLED, which achieves the same resolution like its bigger brother. And here we have Samsung flagship display, the one used in the Galaxy S6. It's 5.1 inch in size and it achieves QHD resolution. Ever Display is a relatively new AMOLED producer in China and it makes 5 inch HD panels. Taiwan's AU Optronics is also producing AMOLED displays, mostly for the wearable market. You can see a 1.6 square one here and a circular wide 0.4 inch, mostly for smartwatches. Transparent OLEDs are now entering the market, but only very simple small displays are available now and in very limited quantities. The only company that produces off the shelf transparent OLEDs is Korea's Nerview Cologne. The company offers several transparent OLEDs, from 1.3 inch in size to 2.4 inch full color ones, which as far as we know is actually no longer in production. Some passive matrix OLED makers offer custom made transparent OLEDs. These makers typically offer displays up to 2 inch in size for dot matrix displays or 4 inch for segmented displays. Here are some examples. This interesting Cairo smartwatch integrates a mechanical watch with a small transparent OLED on top. We do not know the producer of this display. And here's a sample segmented transparent OLED made by One Stop Display, OSD. And finally, here's the off-the-shelf Neoview Cologne 1.3 inch monochrome transparent OLED. Both LG and Samsung are currently mass-producing flexible plastic-based OLEDs. The two Korean companies make displays that are up to 6 inch in size. In 2015, flexible AMOLEDs finally emerged into the real consumer market with two applications. Samsung's Galaxy S6 with its dual curved sides and Apple's watch that uses a flexible plastic-based OLED made by LG Display. Apple chose not to curve this OLED, which looks like a regular glass-based display, but it is though thinner, lighter, and more efficient than comparable LCDs or glass OLEDs. Nerview Cologne and Futaba are the only two companies that currently produce flexible passive matrix OLEDs. These are small and simple displays that can curve slightly. Here you can see Nerview Cologne's small flexible PMOLED, and here you can see Samsung displays 5.7 inch Full HD flexible curved OLED used in the Galaxy Note Edge. The final image is a photo of Apple's watch with its 1.34 inch plastic based OLED produced by LG Display. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Goodbye.